हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा सो वेलकम टू इस्कॉन हरे कृष्णा मंदिर सो टुडे वी गोइंग टू हैव ए श्रीमद भगवत भगवत गीता क्लास फॉर नेक्स्ट फिफ्टी मिनट सो सो मे बी यू कैन सी डाउन इट मिट अराउंड सो दैट आई सो दो आर सीटिंग एट द बैक इफ यू कैन कम एंड सीट अराउंड बी नाइस Thank you, thank you. So, any of you visiting this temple first time? Or you have come come in the past. Okay, very good. Okay, welcome again. Uh, as I said, we will have a Bhagavad Gita class. So, teachings of uh, Lord Sri Krishna, as explained in Bhagavad Gita. Of course, we will just pick up one verse from this uh, Bhagavad Gita and uh, read it and uh, discuss in our own context. in today's context what's happening in the world and how to be live blissfully okay what does it takes to live blissfully so that will be the focus uh, and very relevant to uh, today's context so the program will proceed like this we will do a just 5 minute kirtan and then uh, we will read a verse and then discuss so that we will do for around 40 45 minute then after that you will have an opportunity to chant uh, hari krishna mantra for 10 15 minute then at 6 o'clock there will be uh, mahaprasad upstairs okay so so you can use your brain uh, you know uh, nicely so when brain is used ex- you know extensively we become more hungry so then the prasad will also taste better okay we will do uh, kirtan and then uh, move to bhagavad gita so you can repeat after me jay radha madhava jay kunj vihari jay radha madhava jay kunj vihari जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गिरीवरधारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गिरीवरधारी जय यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमोनतीरावनचारी यमोनतीरावनचारी जय राध माधव जय कुंज विहारी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Gaurani Tai Jaya Gaurani Tai Jaya Gaurani Tai Jaya Gaurani Tai Jaya Radha Vallabha Radha Vallabha Sri Radhe Jaya Jagannata Jaya Jagannata Jaya Baladeva Jaya Subhadra Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Jaya Guru De Guru De Guru De Jaya Jaya Guru De Nita Gaura Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Nita Gaura Hari Bol Shri Shri Gauritai ki, Shri Shri Radhavala Bhagavan ki, Shri 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 Jagannath Baladeva Subhadramaya ki, Shri La Parupad ki, Nita Gaur Premarande. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Hare Krishna. So all of you have seen Bhagavad Gita. So how many of you have this book Bhagavad Gita at your homes? Very nice. So how many of you read it fully? Or how many chapters are there? Generally books have chapters, correct? Yeah, so this book Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters. So they are divided, uh, uh, you know, based on the focus and theme, starting with just introduction, setting the scene, uh, then after usually a summary of the whole content. Then uh, uh, each, uh, you know, um, the topics are divided into uh, broadly uh, three or four that covers different aspects, starting with Karma Yoga, uh, then uh, Gnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, then Bhakti Yoga. So those are very nicely uh, covered in, uh, you know, in uh, Bhagavad Gita. Of course, the goal of Bhagavad Gita is to teach us what is the goal of our life? What is the ultimate goal of our life? We all have goals. You know, kids have got certain goals at certain uh, period of their time. Uh, but what is the ultimate goal of our life? So uh, it is not just being born and finally die. Correct? So we want to make this life successful. So when we look at living beings on earth, so there are many types of living beings in different bodies and forms, correct? We have human body, but there are other living beings, ant body. You know, you can see sometimes ant uh, in your house or even in temple also there, especially when they sense a sweet. So they are very smart in detecting where the sweet is, correct? 
So sometimes if you are in a, you know, uh, sometimes people think, oh, you may have to put a label to your box called sugar, then ant will come. They don't have to, but they're very smart. You don't have to put a label. Without a label also they can detect. So uh, there are so many bodily forms are there. Uh, but human form is generally assumed that, that more intelligent compared to others. Correct? So we have dogs and cats. When you walk around the, you know, on the uh, streets, you will see dogs also going. But generally their master is supposed to be more smarter than the dog. Correct? So since human form of life is more smarter than other living beings, and we have generally better ability to discriminate what to do, what not to do. So, uh, so here in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has given us very nice instruction on how to make your life perfect and successful. So that in next time when you are born, very least you can get a human form of life. Uh, maybe born in an opulent country, in a good situation, good family, good background. So thereby uh, you might be very looking beautiful and you are also born with silver spoon or a golden spoon. That means in a rich family. So hopefully you can live a very uh, nice divine life. So that way will be peaceful. Or if you are born, rather than being born in material world, so perhaps why not take a birth in a spiritual world? So material world we know that it's full of miseries. So it's sometime happiness, sometime misery. It goes on just like we have seen ocean. So many of you have visited ocean, correct? In ocean you will see the waves going up and down, innumerable. You can't even count. If you sit down there and keep counting forever your life, you'll be counting only. So just like that, ups and downs, ups and downs, this world is full of uh, those things. So because this is a relative world, we always uh, in, uh, in earthly planet or in, spirit, in material world, we always think in terms of relativity. So people say, here are the, you know, top ten rich people in the world. This is a relative. Correct? It's a relative. So, our top 200 powerful personalities of this world is again relative. And this can change. So today you might be number one position and tomorrow you'll come down. Correct? So you might be a Brahma uh, at one point. Other time you might be just an ant, insignificant ant. Correct? These positions are, keep changing. And these are not like a permanent position. Like Prime Minister of Australia. Is it permanent position? Maximum three years. Any time you may be removed. Correct? And you have seen everywhere. Everywhere it happens uh, all over the world. Whether it is a UK or Australia, India or America, everywhere there is a change. So those positions changing. Therefore, uh, these positions are uh, not permanent, temporary. So whether you are a Brahma or Indra or an ant uh, or any other uh, person. So this is a relative world. So in a relative world everything is relative. But whereas in absolute world, the supreme absolute world, so there always absolute, everything is absolute. So joy means always joy. So if you go to Vaikuntha Loka or spiritual world, so the place of no anxiety. So that means fully joyful. So of course one can mould your life here itself. So that you can be joyful, uh, not only uh, just in spiritual world, but also you can be joyful here. But the question is, how can we be fully joyful? What does it take? What kind of stays? Uh, how should be our mindset? So that we can be living joyfully all the time. So from that perspective, so there is a uh, you know, word called Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma. So you need to be on Brahma Bhuta platform. There is absolute platform, supreme absolute platform. So then you will be Prasanatma, fully joyful. So, so this verse uh, is given in last chapter, 18th uh, chapter of uh, no, Bhagavad Gita. Of course in Bhagavad Gita, I mean, uh, Bhagavad Gita when you see inside what all topics are really covered. So when we see absolute truth, so there must be someone supreme absolute truth. Who is the supreme absolute truth? So for example, uh, say Lord Krishna, we say he is a supreme Bhagavan. So that is covered here, that absolute truth. And then of course, we all are called jivas, living entities. So humans are living entities, animals are living entities, trees are living entities, birds are living entities, bees are living entities, insects, all are living entities. They have a living force. All of them have living force, isn't it? The dogs have living force, that's why they run, they walk around, they jam, they speak, they also speak, correct? They also eat, they do most of the things that we do. They may not go to office to work, but they don't have to. 
they send their master to work. Correct? In Australia, if you see at homes, so they were peacefully living, but their uh, owners of the dog are going and working and coming back. It is their responsibility. So they are very happy. Yeah, so all of them are uh, jivas. So about jivas, what are the qualities of jivas? And how they can mount their life successfully, those are covered too. Then of course, uh, uh, we are living on this prakriti, right, nature. So we need to understand nature also. What are this nature, nature characteristics, what are its qualities? So, and how we are, you know, played, just like a, a person plays a do doll. Similarly, we are also under subject, subject to nature uh, rules. So understanding nature, that is Prakriti. Then of course, we are subject to time. So five years ago, so, you know, this girl might be a very small baby. Now she uh, became big. In ten years time now, she will be, correct? So we are undergoing time. So we need to understand what is this time actually? So under whose control this time is working? Right? So, understanding time. So, that is also their kala. Then activities, karma. So, we have to perform activities. The moment we have a body, we have to perform certain activities. Uh, bodily activities, activities to earn some money so that we can take care of the body. Uh, so, people say, oh, I'm working just to keep my body and soul together. So, so that you can feed the body. The soul can still be there, body can still be alive. So, this karma, karma. Of course, there are some karma that will elevate. Some karma will degrade us. So that is why we have got prisons, we have police, we have court, correct? So, so how our activities are? So, or none of those, you are not under control of any of those. So if you are performing good activities, uh, following rules and regulations, you are under a different uh, domain. So, so those karma and what karmas will bind us and what karma will liberate us. So those, some karmas will bind us very strictly, uh, very tightly to this uh, world. Uh, the same karma will liberate. So those are also given. What kind of karma that will bind us, uh, that will release us. So those are very nicely covered. Anyway, today our goal is to discuss about uh, absolute joy. So, um, and then how can we achieve that? So this is uh, uh, last chapter, chapter 18. So which is, uh, the title is Perfection of Renunciation. How to perfect renunciation? So uh, we are doing our activities. But we are simply attached to them. Because of that attachment, we become unhappy. You are attached to a person, you become unhappy. You are attached to your wealth, you become unhappy. You are attached to computer, you become unhappy. You are attached to get mobile phone too much, you also become unhappy. So, but how to be renowned perfectly in spite of having all of this? So, so that is uh, uh, the last chapter. Uh, then our today's verse, uh, so I have selected, uh, verse number 54. There are many verses. Each verse is a, you know, uh, if you make, uh, just pick up one verse and make that as your life goal. You are going to live up, uh, uh, as per the instruction of that verse, your life will be successful. So any verse will do. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, verse number 54. So it says, Brahma Bhuta pra, pra, prasnatma, prasnatma Na Sochati Na Kangsati Samaha Sarvesu Bhutesu Mad bhaktim labayate param. So just looking at one one word. Brahma bhuta. Brahma means Brahman. Uh, so there is absolute. Brahma bhuta means being one with that absolute. Brahma bhuta. Prasanna atma means fully joyful. Prasanna means joyful. Prasanna atma means one who is fully joyful. So that means one who is at the Brahma bhuta stage will be fully joyful. Then, na sochati, na kangsati. Na sochati means, uh, na means never. Sochati means laments. He never laments. One who is in the, that Brahma Buddha stage, he will not lament. If there is a loss, he will not lament. If there is a gain, he will not be overly happy. Or if it is a loss, he will not be unhappy. He will be equilibrium. So, uh, that uh, sita pragnya. So, he will be always balanced. So the ups and downs of life will not disturb that person. Who is that person? One who is Brahma Bhuta platform. One who is that level, that consciousness, Brahma Bhuta consciousness. So na uh, sochati, na kangsati. That he does, he doesn't desire anything. He performs certain duties, but doesn't desire. Then samaha sarvesu bhutesu. Sama means equally disposed. Uh, sarvesu to all. Then bhutesu means all living entities. 
So, uh, there are all the living entities are there. Humans are there, dogs are there, birds are there, beasts are there, all of them are there. He will see all of them equally. Equal vision. So, because the one who is at Brahma Buddha platform, he can see that uh, each one of us, actually body, this body is a temple of Supreme Lord. We say we have Paramatma inside. So this person, Brahma Bhuta stage person, sees, uh, you know, uh, in dog body he sees a Paramatma. He sees in dog body, in cat body also Paramatma. And he sees, uh, you know, Paramatma in everybody. So therefore he is very pleased with every person. So that Brahma Bhuta, uh, one who is at uh, Brahma Bhuta platform. Then, Mad Bhaktim Labayate Param. So here, uh, you know, Mad Bhaktim. So Bhakti means doing some devotional service. So he is devoted. So his life, is, his activities are more and more in Bhakti platform. Even if he is working at office. So he performs his duty perfectly. And then whatever earns, when you work in an office, work in some place you earn. So use that money. So, to make his life always in transcendental position. So, so that uh, uh, Mad Bhakti, my devotional service. Uh, labayate, so gains. Laba, we say Subha and Laba. Correct? Normally, uh, if you go to, uh, you know, shop, shops in India, small shop, big shop, the left side door, they write Subha. Others say they write Laba. You have seen? Subha and Laba, Subha Laba. Correct? Subha means auspicious. Laba, gains. Anyone who is doing business, they always want to gain. Nobody starts a business to lose money. Correct? So everyone wants to uh, gain. So, so this person in Brahma Bhuta platform, so he performed this uh, uh, you know, devotional service, which is transcendental. Highest service you can perform. Uh, then of course, the full love gains. So there's full love gains. So when you translate this uh, uh, you know, verse, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Na Sochati Na King Sati Sama Sama Sarvesu Bhutesu Madhbhaktim Labayate Param. So when you translate in English, Prabhupada, you know, for the founder Acharya of Hare Krishna movement worldwide. So he has translated this uh, Sanskrit verse into English, which reads as follows. One who is transcendentally situated, yet once realizes the Supreme Brahman. So Supreme Brahman. Brahman means, you know, um, like we say, Atma, Paramatma, uh, living entities, spiritual living entities, spirit soul. So, so one who realizes the supreme Brahman, that is supreme spirit soul, uh, and becomes fully joyful. He never laments, nor desires to have anything. Because we are always in, you know, lamenting so many things. Constantly we are in lamenting stage. You have something, after uh, some period, we start lamenting about it. Correct? Maybe I have made a wrong decision, I should have taken another one. Always full of lamentation. So, but where this person who is in Brahma Bhuta, he doesn't lament, nor he desires anything. He is equally disposed towards every living entity. Equally. Every living entities. So, he doesn't distinguish between Indian body, black body, red body, you know, uh, white hair, red color, or or there are so many bodies, it doesn't distinguish, equally disposed. Uh, in that state, he attains pure desal service unto me. Krishna is saying that one who is in that state of Brahma Buddha, he is the one who attains bhakti, pure bhakti. Not everyone. So therefore, if you want to attain bhakti and make, uh, make life successful, we have to, you know, um, uh, attain that uh, level, uh, the Brahma Buddha, or absolute truth. So normally when we say absolute truth, so it is always, it generally refers to, uh, you know, Lord Krishna, uh, Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayana. Okay, so absolute truth. And we can realize this absolute truth at different levels. So just like, you know, you read this book, someone in the beginning, they have certain understanding. Then someone which is uh, intermediate, so he has little better understanding. Someone with uh, maybe higher uh, master degree, that person understands better. Correct? Similarly, this absolute truth can be, uh, truth can be realized or understood at three different uh, degrees, three different uh, levels. So, which is uh, in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Brahmeti Parameti Bhagavan Iti Shabdate. So, what we call this absolute truth, you can realize um, as Brahman, second is Paramatma, third one is Bhagavan, Brahmeti. That is Brahman. So in English it is called impersonal Brahman. You know, you heard about Brahma Jyoti. 
Sometimes people praying to Brahma Jyoti. So there are class of uh, transcendental. They are devoted. Some kind of devotion they got. They believe in higher purpose of life, the higher divinity. So for them, this Brahman effulgence is the absolute truth. And they perform puja for the Brahman effulgence. That is imp uh, impersonal Brahman. So who does this kind of uh, impersonal Brahman uh, worship or uh, connect with them? So at that absolute uh, truth. So usually gnanis. You know, we have people who are doing karma for sense gratification. They work very, very hard and enjoy. Work hard and party. That's the mantra they, right? They, so there's one class of people. The next one people, when they do work and hard party all the time, it gets frustrated. At some point you give up. Maybe you say, no, no, this life is, you know, uh, not good. So this huge amount of party, uh, I'm not deriving any pleasure anymore. So then they try to turn towards Jnana path. Then they try to see what is the real purpose of life, you know, start reading, becoming Jnanis. So usually Jnanis are the one who are, uh, you know, at this uh, impersonal Brahman level. So uh, they are called, you know, students of Upanishad. That's the first one. Second one is Paramatma. Rokala is, uh, you know, super soul. So yogis. So yogis, they just, you know, sit down for uh, tens of years, sit down and start meditating on supreme um, super soul in their heart. They realize those are the yogis. So there is Paramatma realization, second stage. And the third one is, highest realization is Bhagavan, supreme person himself. So there is Bhagavan realization. So usually those who are devoted to uh, that Bhagavan uh, are the one who can uh, realize that. If you look at analogy, how do we understand these three concepts? Say for example, you look at uh, sunshine, like today the sunshine, right? Sunshine was there. Then when you look at sometime maybe clouds are blocking, but when it is clearly visible, you can see a sun surface. Or if you are able to go inside the sun globe, you can go to also. You can go inside the sun globe. So these are three different things. But they are actually the same in one sense. Without sun, we won't have a sunshine. So if there is a sunshine, there must be sun. Then when there is a sun, there is a sun planet. And inside there must be some living entities too, if you go inside. So we only see from outside. So this uh, uh, sunshine is like uh, impersonal Brahman. Then, of course, uh, then sun surface is more like uh, uh, Paramatma. Uh, that is, so then, uh, when you go to sun globe, and inside you also see living entities. And in when any globe, any planet, when you go inside, there are always rulers. Someone claims, I am the deity, I am the supreme person of this uh, planet. So in, uh, in uh, sun globe, there is also, uh, you know, sun god. So this is how you realize at three different levels. Or you look at, for example, let's say some mountains. So how many of you gone to, say, Tirupati? Tirupati? Yeah, some of you gone to Tirupati. So Tirupati has uh, Srinivas Govinda, you know, very famous uh, temple there. But if you are very far away, say, say 10, 20 kilometers away from Tirupati, when you see, you know, you see the mountains, but mountains are look like a big sky, correct, like a cloud. When you see from far distance, just look like a cloud. But when you come closer, you know, two kilometer or three kilometer, you see, oh, so there are lots of trees and green. When you go in, into that uh, mountain, you will see, oh, there are people here inside. There are uh, birds, there are peacocks, the people are there, houses are there. Correct? So similarly here, so analogy, far distance, impersonal Brahman realization is like, a, oh, this mountain looking like a hazy cloud. So then, of course, when you go closer, you see a green, some trees. When you go inside, you see people there, living beings are there. Correct? So similarly, you can realize those uh, three different ways. And then when you look at this Bhagavan, what is this Bhagavan? You know, uh, understanding this Bhagavan. Because we want to go to that stage, uh, Brahma Bhuta platform. So we need to understand what is this supreme Brahman. So we know that... Uh, so, uh, uh, the simple way of realization is impersonal Brahman, then super soul, then supreme Brahman. So, uh, this, uh, uh, there is a definition for us, who is Bhagavan, by Parasar Muni. You know, Parasar Muni has given a definition, this is in Vishnu Purana. So, he, say, you know, he says, Aishwarya Samagrasya. Aishwarya means opulence, 
Samagrasya means full of opulence. So this Bhagwan, whom do we call Bhagwan? A person who is Aishwarya Samagrasya, full of opulence, that is one quality. Then Virasya Yasya Sriya. Virasya, Vira means you know strength and power. Correct? People say, oh, this is Vira, uh, Virasya. So Virasya means one who has a full full of strength. Then of course Yasya means fame. The one who is famous, full fame, all famous. So then uh, Sreya, that is beautiful, all beauty. So uh, and then Gnana, Gnana Vairagya Gnana means full of knowledge. Then Vairagya, fully renounced. The person is one who possesses these six things in full. Like sometimes we have you know, uh, rich, richness, but the person may not be fully knowledgeable, not renounced. So there are people who are very rich, so there is a, a full Aishwarya. May not be full, again relative. Their Aishwarya will keep changing. But here Bhagavan is the one who possesses all the six qualities fully. One who is fully, you know, opulent, uh, full of uh, strength, full of uh, Gnana, full of uh, fame, fully beautiful. Uh, then of course, on top of it, fully renounce. So such a person is actually Bhagavan. So therefore, if you can connect with such a person, then he will also slowly gain those qualities as well. So Krishna is called Satchidananda. Ananda, unlimited Ananda. And if you are someone connected to unlimited Ananda, you also get Ananda. See, for example, to power that uh, uh, device, what did I do? I connected to the socket. Socket to electricity. Where is it connected? It is finally connected to the power source. Correct? Because this is connected to power source, we are able to draw this electric power. Similarly, if you are in Brahma Bhuta stage, a platform, and you are connected with the Supreme Person who is Satchit Ananda. So because of that connection, you derive that Ananda. If not, we won't be. Uh, if you just connect yourself to a, you know, a well with no water, you won't be able to get, get any water from there, even if you put the best uh, pump set there. But if you connect to a best water source, you can. So similarly, when you connect to this Bhagavan, one who is, uh, possesses all the six uh, appliances in full, then you will be able to achieve that Satchidananda. Of course, in material conception, in material conception of life or body conception of life, you know, so we are simply working hard day and night just for sense gratification. Correct? So we are working so hard sense gratification. Because of which we have misery. We are attached to it, we worked hard, and our senses are not satisfied. So therefore we have miseries. So in this world there are three types of miseries you can see. So misery is caused by our own body. Our body and mind cause a lot of miseries. Correct? When, young, in the, uh, when you are in young age, maybe not much, but as you start aging, so how many miseries? Correct? Now our senses won't cooperate. We, it's difficult to see I, I know others. That's why we need speck. Why are we having speck? Because our senses are now, you know, become weakened. When you are born, we are not born with uh, speck. Anybody born with speck? No. What a period of time, how we use our senses like eyes, based on that, we might not use properly or maybe some heredity reason. Sometimes they weaken, then we have this speck. Similarly, hearing problem, so many problems. So misery is caused by uh, our body and mind. So those are called adhyatmika miseries. The next one is misery is caused by others. Even your body is cooperating, your mind is good, your senses are perfect. But other living entities will also give you trouble. Correct? Other living entities can be your humans, other humans, or even uh, insects also will cause you trouble. Correct? Sometimes if snake bites you, its poison is very powerful, it can kill a person. Correct? Or mosquitoes will bite. All kinds of living entities will also bite. Those are called Adi Bhautik uh, miseries. Then if not, that Adi Daivik miseries. Miseries caused by nature. Sometimes cold, sometimes hot. Correct, now is the winter, because of that we have to wear jackets, still uh, cold, correct, it's also trouble. Then uh, summer, too much hot, they are also trouble. Then of course this, when we say misery is caused by other living entities, can be danger too. Sometimes other living entities also have desires. 
Correct? They have their own various kinds of desire, which we call, you know, Aristavargas. So, sometimes they are very, uh, you know, jealous about a person. When other persons uh, are jealous of other living beings, what do they do? They can cause a lot of problem, including killing their person. So, last, I mean, uh, yesterday, I think, yesterday you heard, uh, you know, in Japan, the former Prime Minister was killed by another, some uh, common man. Correct? So, he didn't even know. Nobody expected that he has an enemy. So, this person somehow has developed uh, grudge against that person, uh, that former Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Abhi, eh? Abhi. So, so, he was a Prime Minister for 12 years or so, but still that person was killed. So, these are the miseries caused by other living entities. They can give various degrees of miseries. They can physically harm you or mentally harm you or emotionally harm you. Right? Mentally harm you. They may not physically trouble you, but mentally they can uh, give you a lot of trouble. Mental trouble is more dangerous than physical trouble. Correct? Right? Emotionally also can cause you misery. So, these are uh, kind of miseries uh, that we have. But however, in absolute world, this is a relative world, relative world, all these troubles. But in absolute world, that is when you are fully engaged in this Brahma Bhuta platform, so no more misery. That's why it's called Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means place of no anxiety. So everyone is Atma Ramadir. They are self-satisfied. They are not, uh, you know, uh, their mindset is they are fully self-satisfied. They are not expecting anything from others to be happy. Because we are in the relative world, we are expecting something from others to be happy. And if they are not able to fulfill to us, we become their enemy. Correct? So this is uh, very difficult. So like in absolute word, full of love, whereas here full of lust. So that's why we say karma. When this lust, karma, our desire, sensual desire is not satisfied, what happens? Then it turns into kurodha, anger. Karma, kurodha. Then there is a third one is called loba, greed. So we want all the, uh, you know, great thing of the world only just for us. That becomes greed. So as a result, one becomes attached too much. Then of course there is some degree of pride, mother. So then matsara, there is envy. So these uh, six, uh, they are called Aristavargas. So these Ar Aristavargas are very prominent in material world. Very prominent. So, uh, and these are real enemies. In fact, these Aristavargas that we talk, often they are not outside, they are inside us. So these enemies are living inside us. Correct? If, living, if enemy is outside, you can do something about it. Correct? You can seek some high degree protection from the government. You know, police always around you with uh, machine guns uh, holding. So that is outside, you can try to protect. But the miseries are inside and the enemies are inside our mind. What can we do? Very difficult. So they are leaving us, this karma, krodha, loba, it's all in our mind. So we need to get these enemies, defeat those enemies. So, so this Brahma Buddha platform is the one which helps you to defeat them very easily. Then of course, this, uh, when we see devotees, devotees who realize Brahma Bhuta uh, platform, so they, uh, we said, Sama Sarvesu Bhutesu. They see all living entities equally. Why do they see equally? Because they see every living entity is part and parcel of Supreme Lord. So this, there is one verse called, Mama Vamse Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana. All the living entities in this world are part and parcel of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna, you know, is the unlimited uh, supreme uh, spirit soul. And we are also spirit. Actually, in one sense we can say we are also Brahman. Correct? But we are tiny Brahman, tiny spirit soul. Whereas Lord Krishna uh, is a supreme Brahman. So, uh, so they see that all living entities are, you know, part of supreme Lord. And they are, their Brahma Bhuta platform, they are fully in divine state. Therefore, they see these all are children of uh, uh, God. So, therefore, they are my brother, my sister. Correct? So, whether uh, the person is uh, in whatever body and shape, so they accept. In fact, such people at Brahma Bhuta who are able to see equally, so they see even the gold or a stone equally. Uh, then, of course, uh, even of course, they see even the entire world as a Vaikuntha. They can make that world as a Vaikuntha. So, if you have a person with divine consciousness, he will make. The question is, how can we achieve this uh, Brahma Bhuta platform? What is actually our holding us achieving that? Our mind. So, our consciousness. 
our consciousness is full of material consciousness. We have full of unli you know, unlimited desires uh, with that material consciousness and very difficult to satisfy. So very difficult to satisfy them. But however, if our consciousness is changed from material consciousness to divine consciousness, when we achieve that divine consciousness, what happens? Our uh, intelligence that we have got becomes spiritual. So we all have got consciousness, we have our intelligence. Our intelligence can be material intelligence or spiritual intelligence. But how can we make our intelligence uh, spiritual? So for that we have to change our consciousness. Our consciousness has to be divine, God consciousness. Prabhupada says Krishna consciousness. So why God consciousness or why Krishna consciousness? Both are same actually. But sometimes um, Krishna means you know, uh, God can be, is a more like a general word, but where Krishna is uh, defined. Correct? Sometimes we say Prime Minister, or you say Modi. Correct? So now we have got different Prime Minister here. So, um, so there is a uh, Krishna as a Supreme God. So Prabhupada says Krishna consciousness or divine consciousness or God consciousness. When our consciousness is divine, our intelligence becomes spiritual. When our intelligence is spiritual, our mind is in steady state. Otherwise, mind is called as a monkey mind. People say, no, monkey mind. Mind is like a monkey, never satisfied. See monkeys, so they climb a tree, and they see a fruit pluck, pluck and eat a little bit and throw it away. Then they see another uh, banana other side, they will jump and go there. That's why monkeys are always, whenever monkeys take residence of a tree, so they spoil the whole tree. The fruits half eaten, little by turn and thrown. So they are not satisfied with any fruits that they are eating. Similarly, our mind also will not be satisfied with whatever you are given. Even if you become the richest person in Australia, still not satisfied. But, but one whose mind is steady, that person is satisfied with whatever that person has. So very happy person. He is the most happiest person because he is satisfied with whatever he has. Otherwise, we are never satisfied. But when your mind is steady, what happens? We are generally more peaceful. Not generally, absolutely peaceful. Correct? Mind is in steady state, so we are peaceful. And when you are peaceful, what happens? You are happy. So therefore, the foundation for happiness is making our consciousness divine. This is very, very important. So that is called Brahma Bhut, you know, stage. And because of that, having mind, our consciousness uh, divine, then we are able to achieve that uh, full joy, full happiness, because of our connection with uh, uh, divine. When you see, um, even if you see, if you re uh, read through the Vedas, or Srimad Bhagavatam and others, you see uh, many, many nice stories about uh, devotees who have undergone so many tribulations. Say for example, uh, Prahlad, Bhakta Prahlad. His father name was Hiranyakashipu. Hirne Kashipu, you know, he was ruling all three worlds. So he became king, he became a king of uh, heavenly planet, earthly planet, upper planet, lower planet, all planets. He was ruling, so very powerful king. And he declared himself as the Supreme Bhagavan also. So when his son, who was a devotee, because son, when, uh, 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 when he was in the womb of his mother, so he heard from Narada Muni, the goal of life, he heard uh, teachings of, from Narada Muni. So he achieved Brahma Bhuta stays in Umbuli. So after uh, his uh, uh, birth and then um, uh, when he started learning, then when he reached the age of around Kaumar, that's like a five, six or uh, ten, I mean around eight years age. So at that time, you know, uh, his Hiranyakashipu asked him, who is Supreme Bhagavan? He says, Lord Vishnu is the Bhagavan. So Hiranyakashipu didn't like it. So he said, oh, he ordered, kill this fellow, even though he is a son. So he subjected him to so many troubles, including, you know, throwing him into the fire, or throwing from cliff of mountain, or making, uh, you know, throwing into snake pit. So, so many troubles are given, but this uh, Prahlad was happy, because he was protected in a Brahma Bhuta stage, Pretty much he, is, he achieved oneness with the Supreme. So he received that protection. That's why he's protected. So, so that is the level. So Prahlad, 
There are many other devotees, even if they engage, they were able to achieve that uh, level of uh, dev- you know, consciousness, pure consciousness. They became a pure devotees, Brahma Buddha stage. So, um, uh, we, you can see uh, there are many ways we can uh, achieve. So, essentially our goal is to make our consciousness divine. By making our consciousness divine, we will be able to have our intelligence which is uh, spiritual. Then as a result, our mind will be steady. When the mind is steady, we will be, you know, peaceful. And when we are peaceful, we will be happy. So, um, uh, of course, there are many paths uh, in achieving that Brahma Buddha stage. So, yeah, in Bhagavad Gita, you know, Lord Krishna knows that uh, we have, where it is a mentality, correct? So, each one of us to achieve our goal in different ways. So, so those we call yogic paths. Uh, the first one is called Karma Yoga. Yoga means connecting with the Divine. You can connect with the Divine through Karma, through action. Karma Yoga. Then the next one is Jnana Yoga. There are some, they are not so much inclined to activities, but they are inclined, in, inclined to Jnana path. So that is the Jnana Yoga. And there are some uh, humans, they are inclined to doing Dhyana. Correct? Tapas. They want to sit down and start doing tapas for many years. Tapas. Then of course the last one is called Bhakti Yoga. So these are called like a ladder. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Final our goal is to reach Supreme Mundi. But in the beginning we just want to play around ourselves. We want to do Karma Path. So then Karma Path, then you go to the next, uh, this Jnana Path. Then you go to the Dhyana Path. Then finally bhakti. It might take many lifetimes. Some people in certain life, they are very much, uh, you know, excited about following karma path. Let them follow. Maybe it takes few more lives. Then they will go to jnana path. Some more life will go to then um, dhyana path. Then finally come to bhakti path. So like, if you, if you need to go to, say, in a skyscraper building, multi-story building, so you want to go to the last uh, floor. So you can take staircase, you know, keep going slowly, 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 you reach there. But it may take a lot of time. So many lifetimes it will take to reach that uh, final uh, level. Or you can take a lift from ground floor to floor 99. So direct. So this bhakti yoga is called as this direct, like a lift. Anyone can take it, anytime. So easy. And actually this is the most easiest. Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga are very difficult path. So, yes, those are the paths that people follow during, you know, Satya Yoga. So, when we divide this Yoga, you know, time, um, uh, the cycle of this world, so they call Satya Yoga, uh, Treta Yoga, Dwapar Yoga, and now is Kali Yoga. In uh, the approach that people took in Satya Yoga uh, is different from uh, Kali Yoga. In, Kali, in, 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 uh, in other yugas, people were able to live for, you know, 100,000 uh, years. Whereas we can only live 100 years maximum, 60. Even if you're a prime minister with full security, 69 years. That's how this Sabi lost his life, correct? 69 only, in spite of being a prime minister of Japan, rich country, correct? So maybe 50, 60. So very small life. Our life is very, duration is, life duration is, is reducing from uh, Satya Yoga to Kali Yoga. So they used to perform, uh, you know, tapas for 10,000 years. Who can perform tapas for 10,000 years? Very difficult. And that to standing in one leg. Then we have no drinking water, correct? No Melbourne water. Correct? You have to just simply survive. Uh, so that is what in Satya Yoga. In Treta Yoga, uh, you know, people perform opulent worship and opulent uh, yagnas. Uh, Dwapar Yoga, more worship, but when Treta Yoga, more opulent uh, yagnas they perform. So those things are very difficult for us in Kali Yoga. So that is why in Kali Yoga say that whatever you can achieve in those Yugas performing, you know, um, uh, tapas for 10,000 years, then performing yagnya, big, big yagnya, and performing uh, opulent temple worship, the same thing you can achieve in Kali Yuga simply by chanting Holy Name. Kali Yuga Nama Rupa Krishna Vatara. In Kali Yuga, Krishna, Supreme Bhagavan, has appeared in His Holy Name, made it simple. 
like you know, so passing an exam. So, for example, those in grade one also writing an exam, those in uh, engineering or bachelor degree also writing exam, those in master degree also writing exam, those who are doing PhD also writing exam. All of them writing exam. But passing expectation is uh, where is the least? So, in PhD, you have to create a new knowledge to get the degree. That's your exam. In master level, you have to show that you are really master of some specific aspect. In bachelor level, you are jack of many things. Correct? Then when you go to primary school, especially grade one, your exam is very simple. You just write A or scratch something, they will say pass, go to the next level. Correct? So you just write A, B, C, D, finish, you are passed. But if you write A, B, C, D in PhD, will they give you PhD? They won't. But however, so similarly in, in Kali Yuga, it is the age of hypocrisy, quarrelsome. People will quarrel for even small matter, quarrel and hypocrisy. They say one thing and do other things. Correct? During election time, they promise you heaven, but after that, uh, you have to suffer next two, three years until there is a change. Again, they promise, then again, same thing. Correct? Only promises. So, delivering is very difficult uh, here. But we are get carried away by that promise only. So, one who promises you the most at that time, so we vote for him. After that, uh, the reality of the life, we have to accept it. Yeah, so that's what happens. So, anyway, so uh, uh, here in Kali Yuga is simplified. Uh, so, that is why he said, you know, Kali Yuga, Nama Rupa Krishna Vatara. So, simple, simple chanting. Sometimes people don't believe. Oh, just this simple chanting is equivalent to doing the tapas so long, so much. Yes, it is, because it's the Kali Yuga. Our life is so short. Are we misguided? Correct? We have got guided missiles, misguided humans. People talk about guided missiles, right? The intercontinental missile. You pinpoint exactly from one country and then intercontinent, it will fly through multiple continents and hit the target. That is a guided missile. But the people are misguided. Guided missile, but misguided people. So, so this is the word. So, therefore, the process has to be simple. Achieving Brahma Bhuta has to be simple. So, the simplest is, uh, you know, uh, chanting holy name. This is what even Bible prescribes. Holy name. Uh, Quran also prescribes. Chant uh, God name. So, that is why sometimes Muslims, they don't have any deity. So, they say, okay, we just pray. Holy name. Allahu Akbar. Correct? So they will just pray, Allah is the Supreme Lord. So they just keep praying. So similarly, you know, Bible also says the same thing, of course, Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. So this is the complete. So if you are in Satya Yoga, what do you do? If you are in Kali Yoga, uh, what do you do? If you are in between Treta Yoga, Dapara, what to do? So everything is there. It doesn't matter which Yoga you appeared. So now that we are in Kali Yoga right now, we have been there in Satya Yoga also. Maybe we didn't do that much tapas. Finally, we came to Kali Yuga. This is last chance. Very easy. So, Kali Yuga and Amarupa Krishna Vatara. And by doing this chanting, even at your last breath of your life, you are able to remember the Supreme. So, if you are able to remember Supreme in last breath of your life, this higher success of your life, you will immediately appear in Vaikuntha Loka. Correct? No more IELTS exam, no more PR, no more going through any of this complex city. Direct. In uh, next uh, moment, you will be in uh, that uh, supreme, I mean, in Vaikuntha Loka. So that is why they say life is a preparation. Throughout life we are preparing so many exams, but this death is the final exam for our life. We must pass somehow. So only way of passing is to be able to remember Supreme Lord. Our consciousness has to be that divine. And if you make that divine consciousness, you will appear in that world. Otherwise, so, we have this material world, we have got 8.4 million possibilities, starting from, uh, you know, lowly uh, insects to the uh, human. So, there are many possibilities are there. So, therefore, it is very important to make that uh, life successful. Okay, with that, let me conclude. Thank you all, you, all of you, thank you all of you for hearing patiently. So, essentially, we discuss about this Brahma Bhuta, uh, uh, you know, stage to be able to joyful, fully joyful. So, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma. And one who is at stage, you know, will be able to achieve that uh, Prasanatma, fully joyful, sees everyone equally, then uh, he doesn't lament for uh, when there is a loss, 
nor fully jubilant when there is a gain. So is Sita Pragna. Sita Pragna is very important, that stage, that is the Brahma Bhuta stage. And you can achieve that by simple chanting in Kali Yuga. So that is prescribed. Uh, this, uh, you know, Kali, this Kali Yuga, what you call it, full of fault, ocean of fault. But there is one good quality. That good quality is simply by chanting holy name. Like Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Ayokevalam. So just by chanting, say for example, Hare Krishna Mantra or uh, uh, Sri Rama Mantra. So Hare Krishna Mantra is the most easiest, most effective, but others also will do. Or Vishnu Sahasra Nam also. But you have to do a lot, whereas Hare Krishna Mantra is more simpler, okay, more easy. So, if you do one uh, thousand names of uh, Vishnu, that is equivalent of three names of Rama. Three names of Rama equal to one name of Krishna. You say one time Krishna equal to three time Krishna, equal to one thousand times of uh, Vishnu Sahasrama. All of them are uh, there. So, some people are inclined to those. Yes, do it. Slowly you can come to uh, Krishna platform also. Or otherwise just start from beginning. Start uh, highest, that is uh, chanting holy name, Hare Krishna Mantra. Okay, so with that, let me stop here. So, thank you all for uh, hearing patiently. Hare Krishna. So, if you have any comment, question, you have better solution, better way of achieving Brahma Bhuta platform, you can share. Otherwise, our devotees are there. So, they have chanting mala. So, you can chant for one round for five, six minutes. So, slowly, slowly it will take time. You will uh, like it, slowly. Then come to Brahma Bhuta platform. You don't need to achieve Brahma Bhuta platform in a day. But if you start it, that's uh, really good. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, uh, we have got this mala uh, containing 108. So, do we need to chant with mala or we can chant without mala? Okay. So, um, you know, why do we chant with mala? So, people say, what is measured, that gets done. Correct? So, if you are working for office, people say these are KPIs, performance indicators. We will definitely work towards achieving those performance indicators. If there are no performance indicators, just do whatever you like, whenever you like, come in you like, do whatever you like. If you say, there are some people who are very honest, they will come and do it. But others will take advantage, they will not bother. So, chanting with mala is at least ourselves. We say, oh, I want to chant one round. Some of our mind will say, hey, you have to finish this round, you committed, let's do it, whatever it is. Whether it is in the morning or evening or afternoon, some of we try to do. Yeah, so that is one. And second, uh, so these uh, malas, some of the malas are tulsi beads. So tulsi is considered very auspicious. When you hold tulsi bead and do, so you are connected with some auspicious. So therefore, it is much more, uh, you know, effective, much more effective. Otherwise, one who is pure, 
it is not necessary. You can actually chant without any mala. So those are really Brahma Bhuta, pure devotees. They are behind rules and regulation. Yeah. So those of us who are not achieved that level, so it is better for us to follow, uh, chant with mala. Some are also chanting with counter. There is one electronic counter, you say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Then you press the button. Like this, it says one. Then do like that, two, three, four. That's one of the ways you can do it. So that is more like a modern. You can carry, the, instead of this, uh, you know, mala might look like a old-fashioned. Uh, but once you start doing it, you will get used to you like it. Initially, we feel uh, shy. You know, we are very consciousness of our body. You hear this mala, in, in, like in a bead bag. You put and you're going, and you think, oh, what other people will think? Uh, we are very conscious of that, those things. But over a period of time, you reach a platform a level where you don't worry about what other people will think. You will only be concerned about your duty, your internal cleanliness. So it is, you don't worry about what other people will say about it. So because you are concerned about your own personal purity, then you are joyful, you don't worry about other people. Yeah. Yes, you can chant with mala, without mala. So this is like a medicine. So I have this medicine, I, I have full knowledge of this medicine, I am taking it. Or I have no knowledge of this medicine, I am taking it. Will it work or not? The medicine will work whether you know it or do not know it. Whether you know its glory or you do not know its glory. You, yeah, it will work. Similarly, chanting, whether you chant with mala or without mala, it will work. No problem. In the beginning, do not worry. Just keep chanting and be happy. Slowly, if you are inspired to chant on bead, please do it. Otherwise, chanting without bead also is very glorious. One, if you say just Hare Krishna once in your life, your next life as a human form is assured. This Lord Krishna is assuring. So therefore, there is no loss, whether you chant with or without. But if you want it to be boosted, like these, you know, they are saying bicycle, bicycle. You can bicycle and you can reach the destination, but if there is a booster, it will speed up. So mala is like a booster. Without booster also you can do it, but it may be more uh, effort. Uh, for most people. But those who are highly dedicated and sincere, for them it doesn't matter. Yeah, I hope it answers. Thank you. Hare Krishna, please uh, continue with one round of chanting. I'll just turn up the volume. Hmm? So if, uh, if anyone has uh, parked your car in front of...